Hello, and welcome to episode 161 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're talking all about collections inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. We're gonna talk about what they are, how to make them, and how to manage them. Now, collections are a great feature inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic, and I do wanna say we're talking about Adobe Lightroom Classic, even though that I know I'm gonna say Adobe Lightroom instead of Adobe Lightroom Classic. So we're specifically talking about collections inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic and how they're gonna help you get your images better organized and save you time when you're looking for a particular image. Adobe Lightroom Classic handles storage of images really well, but when you're trying to look across multiple folders or you're trying to find the best image available, those things can be a little bit difficult or time consuming, especially if you're just starting off using this program. So regardless of your experience level, collections can offer you a great solution in finding your images. Now. Collections are exactly what they sound like. It's a collection of images across multiple folders, multiple locations, multiple hard drives, if you have multiple hard drives in your catalog on Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's all easily done and accessed. But I do wanna stress two things before we dive into this. First of all, you are not moving images around when you add a photo to a collection. There's, no, there's not a storage area on your hard drive where those files are being moved to. These are virtual copies, aliases, um, I'm trying to think of shortcuts. It's that kind of thing. You see the images, but they're not actually all collected into one area. And that leads into the second thing to understand. If you remove something from a collection, you don't actually remove it from your catalog inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic and certainly not off of your computer. So you could add or subtract to collections as much as you want to. And you don't have to worry about your files organization changing actually on your hard drives. So let's jump into Lightroom and see how we can work with collections. In the library module on the left-hand column, you should see the collections panel. It will have a plus and minus symbol located there. Now, if you have some collections already, you should see them listed below. Now, if you can't see the collections panel, right-click over any panel in the left-hand column, you'll get a pop-up menu or pop-up window, and you could select collections there, and now you should be able to see the panel. From there, you could click on the plus symbol to create either a regular collection or a smart collection. Now, these two different types of collections are very powerful, and they can be used in different ways. A regular collection is just a drag and drop feature. So you could add or subtract photos to that collection by just moving images in it or deleting images from it. And we'll see that in a second. A smart collection leverages metadata. So if you haven't used metadata, you might not see the power of a smart collection. However, I have found that smart collections are a great way to, for people to see the power of metadata because sometimes that very time consuming process of keywording and tagging you don't see the payoff with it. Well, you will with smart collections. Now let's get back to creating a regular collection. You're gonna click on that plus symbol again, you're gonna select create collection and you're going to go ahead and give it a name. Now, the beautiful thing of this process is if you already have some images selected when you do this, you can choose to add those images to your collection when you make this new collection. I do wanna stress giving each collection a unique name, especially if you're going to do smart collections, you might wanna leverage or use the metadata that is part of the smart collection as part of the name. Same with regular collections, just saying best photos, uh, it might be best dog photos, it might be best cat photos, vacation photos, best photos of 2022 or 2023, something like that. Give it a unique name. It'll make it easier in the long run to manage your collections. When you're doing a normal collection, you also have the ability to create a virtual copy. So if you were wanting to get a bunch of images just to make them black and white, maybe you were doing black and white landscape images, it might be a good idea to make virtual copies at this time. So that way you have your regular color images and now you would have images in here that you're going to make black and white and they're already virtual copies. The last option allows you to make this collection as your target collection. So when you're importing images or doing some sort of keyboard shortcuts, you could just modify or send an image directly to this particular collection. Once you have your options set and your name inputted, you could just go ahead and hit, hit create and you'll now see the name of that collection listed in the collections panel. Now, if you had images selected, when you click on collection, you will see those images pop up inside your library module. If you don't have any images part of the collection, when you click on that, you will see that there are no images inside the collection. Now, adding images to a collection is very easy. You first of all need to just go to a folder to where you wanna add images from, open up that folder and then select the image or images because you could do multiple at a time and then just drag them to the collection. And when you release the mouse button over the collection, you'll see that image counter increase for the collection and your images will be added. 
Now, once you have images inside your collection, when you click on the collection, you will see them there. And you could add further images to this collection. You can also delete any image from a collection by selecting it or multiple images and then hitting backspace or delete on the keyboard. Again, you're not deleting any images from your actual catalog or your hard drive. So you won't get prompted with a, are you sure you wanna do this? Because Lightroom sees collections as like a cool shortcut. So it's not really worried about you deleting something from a collection. So do understand you're not gonna get a warning. It's just gonna remove it from the collection. Now, one interesting thing about collections is that in many cases, features like books or certain contact sheet features inside the print module do require your images to already be inside of a collection. So even if you're not planning on using collections, you might need to use a collection or create one to create a book inside of Lightroom or maybe use or create a contact sheet inside of Lightroom. Now, the other type of collection for me is really powerful, and that is a smart collection because smart collections will use and leverage your metadata to help you automatically add or subtract images to a particular collection. Now I'm gonna go back to the collections panel, click on the plus symbol, and then select smart collection. Now you don't have as many options initially. You can't make virtual copies, you can't make it a target set. That's because you're not manually doing anything inside of here. Now you wanna give this a unique name that describes what's gonna go inside the smart collection. So a name of subject's great, but maybe you wanna further uh, elaborate. Are these the best images? Are these the images from a current year? Something like that. Now, once you do that, you will see below that there's a section where you can go ahead and add a criteria. This is kind of like old database stuff here. You're asking a, if this plus this, then do this kind of thing. And you actually have a drop down at the top that you could actually change the criteria matching up if it's any, all, those kinds of features. Now, the very first thing is rating. So if you've been using star ratings and you wanna use that as part of your smart collection, great. But you don't have to use star ratings. In fact, you could change the dropdown for rating to just about any feature that you want to. You could do very basic things that don't even require you inputting metadata. You could actually look for date and time of images shot as long as you've set your date and time on your camera. That's key. And by the way, not a bad thing to do if you haven't done that lately. Make sure that your date and time is correct. For a lot of instances, people will use ratings or flags or color labels. In this case, a setting of say three stars, greater than or equal to any image that matches that. Now, the problem is that's going to do trigger a lot of images, at least in this particular catalog. So I wanna further narrow down the smart collection. So I'm gonna hit the plus symbol in the far right hand side and add another piece of criteria. In this case, I am going to use keywords, but you could also use titles or captions as well. And then I am going to use the keyword, in this particular case, fly fishing. Now, when I do that, I now have two criteria here. I do want to stress that you have to make sure that you're using the correct keywords if you're going to use keywords. So if you did fly fish for one set of images and fly fishing for another set of images, you're not going to get everything correct. So you want to make sure that you're always using the same keywords and you're not uh, changing things a little bit and everything kind of fits under the same umbrella. Now, once I hit create here, I will not only get a new collection in the collections panel, but I will also get images auto populate in there. And you'll see that I have an image counter. Now, if I was to go into say another folder for fly fishing and just randomly select a couple of images and change their rating from say none to three, you would immediately see the counter increase. And when I go into that smart collection, you will see that those three images have been added to that particular collection. Now, again, if you're not using metadata, smart collections can uh, not lose its luster a little bit. It could seem a little bit more complicated, but this might be the very thing that causes you to really leverage metadata. There is a whole list of possible options that you could use for smart collections to really make it efficient when you're working for your photography. All of a sudden, somebody picks up the phone and calls you and says, hey, we want to hire you to do some landscape work. What were the best landscape images that you did in this particular location in 2022, right? Or 2023. You can go ahead and make a smart collection immediately and have those images automatically added. And a really nice thing about collections is you could actually export out an entire collection as its own catalog. So if you had to go on the road and you wanted to do some further editing and you wanted to consolidate your data or you wanted to do maybe a presentation and you needed to do live editing in the presentation, you could actually get all of those images onto a separate catalog and make copies of those images so you have everything consolidated in one particular place. 
This is a very powerful feature for those photographers who are working with maybe with multiple clients and need to manage those clients and their expectations. You're a wedding photographer. Well, you could use, say, captions or titles so you could separate, say, uh, a bride getting ready, walk down the aisle, first kiss, rehearsal dinner, first dance. And that way you could actually have smart collections that deal with those different topics or subjects throughout a wedding. So it's easy to go from, say, one best set of images for first kiss to another set of images for walking down the aisle. It's really up to you how far you want to go with smart collections. But I will say this, a little bit of time and effort with uh, metadata goes off a long way when it comes to smart collections. And again, regardless if it's a regular collection or a smart collection, you could export them out as a catalog. And also you can make something called a collection set. So if you had a several collections that were kind of revolved around the same topic, but you didn't want to have a really long list inside of collections, because sometimes when you learn about these things, you start making a lot of collections. You could make a collection set and just drag and drop collections into them. So that allows you to further consolidate your imagery and give you a better control over that particular panel, because it can get out of hand once you start to make too many collections. Well, that brings a close to collections inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Also, speaking of that channel, I have a lot of great videos on not only Lightroom Classic tutorials, but also photography, video techniques, gear reviews. There's a lot there and I encourage you to check it out. Also, it would be great if you shared this content with fellow photographers, filmmakers, other people working in post-production. It'd be greatly appreciated. And of course, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Uh, did you enjoy this video? Is there topics on Adobe Lightroom Classic you want to see further videos on? Are you using collections already? It'd be great to hear from you. So until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.